He was an inventor trying to sell his creations to make a living, unlike his own brother, who was using his intelligence for crime. But one day, he met the Shredder and he lost his dignity, his assets, and his humanity. Today I will be talking about the Fred Wolf cartoons version of Baxter Stockman, The Fly. I previously explored the original version of Baxter in this other video, and as you can notice, there is a very obvious difference between that version and this one. The character, as created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, could have been of any race, but they decided to go for a black person. When David Wise was contacted to adapt the character, he either didn't notice Baxter was black, or he just wanted to go in a very different direction. In this concept design for the cartoon, it was pretty clear they were more inspired by Doc Brown from Back to the Future. You may ask yourself, what was the point of making a villain look like Dr. Brown? Well, it turns out that the idea wasn't for Baxter to be a villain in the show, but an ally to the Turtles. In fact, by the end of the initial five episodes, the Turtles would have moved into Baxter's scientific complex, the Technodrome, so Baxter would have had the same kind of relationship with the Turtles that Doc Brown had with Marty McFly. When they found out, Eastman and Laird rejected the idea. The Turtles already had a scientist in Donatello and a father figure in Splinter. Still, Baxter kept his Doc Brown aesthetics in the David Wise and Patty Howarth episode known as A Thing About Rats. The episode was a loose adaptation of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles No. 2, but instead of being an unscrupulous villain, he was a simple, absent-minded inventor trying to sell his invention, the Mousers, to a pest control company. After seeing the effectiveness of the Mousers, he was rejected in fear that Baxter could effectively eliminate the rat problem. So, do you think Ajax Pest Control would be interested in my invention? Well, to put it in a single word, get out of here! Hey! Baxter had his own lab and a van, so he probably lived off some patents, but it is worth mentioning, and I will explore this later in this video, that his brother was working for the Mafia, so Baxter is anything but a villain up to this point. This would change after his rejection, as Shredder learned about his Mouser invention and wanted to give him all the resources he needed to mass-produce it. Poor Baxter didn't realize he was allying himself with an evil, masked guy with a cape and blades in his forearms. As I said before, he was a little absent-minded. After a dozen were produced, Shredder sent a dozen after Splinter, but the Mousers were stopped by the Turtles, who, after a little investigation, were able to find out they were Baxter's creations. Baxter Stockman Inventions. What kind of idiot puts his name on a death machine? An idiot with an ego problem? When Baxter finished creating the Master Control Unit, he went home to rest. Realizing he knew too much, Shredder sent the footbots after him to put him out of the way. But the Turtles were waiting for him and saved his life. He told them the location of the Mousers, and the Turtles, knowing they would go hunting Splinter at April's apartment, stole Baxter's van to make it there on time. They never returned it to him. In fact, the van became the party wagon. More about that in this other video. The Turtles got there in time to save April and Splinter, but the whole building collapsed. Knowing the location of the Master Control Unit, the Turtles went to stop the Mousers. Michelangelo received some help from Krang, who wanted Shredder to fail in this mission so he could dedicate more time to working on making a new body for him. The Turtles took Baxter's van and went to his lab, and continued taking things from him, and that is how the Turtle Blimp was born. Then again, had the writers gone with their original plan, the Turtles would have simply borrowed from their Doc Brown. But Baxter never recovered from his mistake. He probably told too many people about being tied up by four Ninja Turtles and ended up in a mental institution. Shredder, who was out of henchmen, took him out of the asylum and started using and abusing him for all his different ploys. Baxter clearly couldn't work under the constant bullying of the Shredder, which may have caused many of his plans to fail. Furthermore, he wasn't an ideal henchman when it came to fighting. In the episode Enter, The Fly, by Michael Reeves and Bryn Stevens, inspired by the 1986 remake of The Fly, things took a dramatic turn for the worse. After failing too many times, Krang agreed to send Bebop and Rocksteady back to Earth, but to do so, Shredder needed to send something in exchange to compensate. Shredder sent Baxter, who Krang sent to be disintegrated. But a fly got in the chamber with him, and this caused him to mutate into a super fly. This may have been inspired by a toy designed by Peter Laird of a mutated fly, simply called the fly. However, by the time a mutated fly was produced by Playmates, it was named Baxter Stockman, based on the cartoon. 
Angry at Shredder and the Turtles, Baxter took a weapon and returned to Earth, although this time no one needed to send anything to balance the teletransportation. Super convenient. While still intelligent, the transformation clearly affected Baxter's mind. Shredder took advantage of this and convinced him that it was the Turtles who transformed him into a fly. Together they set up a trap for them, a contraption that would have sent their molecules one second forward in time or whatever. Baxter fell into his own trap and, as a result, stayed in a ghost form, watching Shredder and the Turtles in the shadows. But becoming solid again was super easy. He just needed to be hit by lightning, something he did after discovering all his enemies would be in the same place. Baxter kidnapped April to lure the Turtles into a trap, but when he went after Shredder, the villain convinced him they were friends and that he could turn him back to normal in exchange for his help in destroying the Turtles. With the help of the Rat King, the Turtles found the location of April, but they were ambushed by Baxter and Shredder, and the Turtles almost died from a toxic gas. By the end of the confrontation, Shredder and Baxter made it back to the Technodrome. Tired of being insulted, Baxter decided to return to the surface, where he lived in some catacombs under the streets of New York. One day, he scared some archaeologists away from an ancient temple buried for three centuries under New York. This wasn't a temple, but a spaceship with a sentient computer we would later know as Z. Interacting with Z, Baxter discovered the spaceship had a pan-dimensional warp drive that would allow the ship to cross to other dimensions. He quickly realized this was the perfect bait to set a trap for Shredder and Krang. The Turtles, who were on their way to the ancient temple, crossed paths with Shredder, who was collecting pieces of the warp drive. This forced the Turtles to get involved. Z gave Baxter a weapon to get revenge on Shredder, a Mutazu ray gun, a device that would allow him to transform others into animals. Baxter used it to transform Shredder into a fly and Michelangelo into a gerbil. Desperate to help his brother, Donatello tortured Z into giving them the location of Baxter. Thanks to this, they turned Mikey back to normal. By the time Baxter reactivated the spaceship, everyone else had left it. But since Shredder never found one of the pieces of the warp drive, the spaceship started disassembling in a dimensional limbo, where Baxter ended up trapped. Oh, and back on Earth, Shredder was eventually turned back into a human, thanks to the Mutazu ray gun, which remained at the Technodrome. Baxter and Z reunited in limbo, and after finding a dimensional wormhole, they made it back to Earth, where they ran into a solid energy generator. With this device, Z was able to create a body for itself. They then proceeded to bait Shredder and the Turtles by taking over Channel 6. This worked because Krang needed a new computer. Just go with it. But Baxter's mind continued to degrade, and now he had the short-term memory of an actual fly. Now, go find that woman who's friends with the Turtles, April O'Neil. Find April O'Neil! April O'Neil! Oh, put me down! Here she is! April O'Neil! No, no. <laughs> That's not even a woman. She looks like this, Baxter, old pal. Excuse me, I'm looking for April O'Neil. I'm a little busy right now. Oh, sorry. I'll take you instead. Oh, no. No, not again. I should have stayed in radio. Of course, the Turtles and Shredder eventually made it to Z, and Leonardo found a way of destroying the computer. However, a chip with its conscience remained. Baxter picked it up and went through a portal, chasing Shredder. But on the other side, Krang closed the portal, and Baxter stayed trapped in Limbo again. Krang accidentally freed him from Limbo one day, and Z quickly took over the Technodrome. With all the technology at its hands, it started controlling the footbots who took Shredder and his gang prisoners for most of the episode. Z went mobile, and with Baxter, they returned to the city with some mutagen to create new insect creatures. Yeah, I'll go you one better than that. I'd say it was a five and a half foot mutant fly with four arms named Baxter Stock. How on earth did you deduce that? Oh, just call it an inspired guess. Donatello tortured Z again to learn about Baxter's plan of turning the people at Channel 6 into insects. The turtles went to the rescue, but in the middle of the confrontation, April was turned into a wasp. This reminded me of that alternate universe April in IDW, a mutant dragonfly known as Nightbug. I would like to see what happened to her. The turtles captured Baxter and took him to the Technodrome to get the Mutazu ray gun to transform their friends back to humans. But since the Technodrome was under the control of Z, it freed Baxter. Donatello, who clearly had a problem with Z, killed it with his bow 
and that was the end of it. Still, it didn't take long for Baxter to lose control of the situation. He grabbed the gun and jumped back into dimensional limbo. The turtles went after him, recovered the gun, and left him trapped again in limbo forever. Before leaving the Technodrome, the turtles left Shredder trapped inside of it. They didn't try to take him to the authorities. No, they just left him there. With the Mutazoo ray gun, they turn everyone back to humans, except for Splinter. They probably ran out of batteries. Now, remember I mentioned Baxter had a brother. His name was Barney Stockman, and he was very much like Baxter but with red hair, although the Baxter action figure had red hair, but in the cartoon, his hair was lighter. In any case, this brother of Baxter hated being confused for him, and he was also an inventor, but in his case, he voluntarily used his mind for crime. He was working for the gangster known as Pinky McFingers, who was kidnapping stand-up comedians, including Raphael, to use them with Barney's new machine, the Gaga Magnifier. This device increased the comedy power of jokes by 6,000%, and the idea was to spread it throughout the city in joke waves, reducing citizens to helpless hysteria. While all that happened, Pinky and his men would steal everything they wanted. I can't believe this is happening! This is too bizarre! Even for a cartoon! Then again, the Turtles saved the day, and Barney went to jail. He never appeared again, except as a boss in the fan-made game TMNT Rescue Palooza. Having said that, a somewhat red-haired version of Baxter Stockman was introduced in the 4Kids cartoon, but it was a new character inspired by the old cartoon's Baxter, Dr. Chaplin. In any case, I left out one other appearance of Baxter because it doesn't fit in the continuity. In the story titled Landlord of the Flies, Baxter had the power to control flies, and he made a pact with Shredder to bring the city down to its knees in exchange for transforming him back to human. But of course, the turtles sent Baxter back to the dimensional limbo, and without him, the flies returned to normal. This episode didn't have a clear space in the timeline, and Baxter's control over flies was never used again. Still, it is a little tragic that, for a guy who wanted to simply sustain himself from his inventions, he was utterly ruined by one single mistake. And now, for something completely different, I want to give some shoutouts to some of this channel's fans. Thank you, Lucas Gibbs, for always commenting on videos. And thank you to the legendary Taka Oroku for his very resourceful history with the franchise. If you are intrigued by the motivations of the original Baxter Stockman, you can check out this video. Thanks for watching.